Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic finally Friday. I'm KNWA and Fox 24 Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff. Got some job shadows as well. Go ahead and wave to the camera. They're from uh, Washington Junior High, Lincoln Junior High, and Fulbright as well. And we're watching the potential for significant severe weather on your Sunday. I wanted to get you caught up with the latest. Also tell you ways that you can keep up with severe weather information. That's going to be really important to do on your Sunday. Let me take you through uh, what we're expecting. First of all, here's what you need to know with this system coming in. Storms are likely on Saturday, but those are going to be in Oklahoma. So around northwest Arkansas, we have no issues with thunder storm so the uh, razor fest and uh, the spring red white game events also race for the cure many other things taking place there'll be a little isolated storm that pops up in southwest Missouri but uh, the majority of the afternoon and evening will be beautiful but as we move into the overnight hours we could have storms moving in early Sunday we're talking after midnight possibly a little earlier but the potential for significant severe weather is on Sunday and that does include the late afternoon into the evening hours on Sunday so where will this hit well we have a widespread severe weather event uh, and it's going to be multiple days of severe weather now storms will remain to the west of us on Saturday, but the entire area is under a significant risk of severe weather on Sunday. And I know that we are saying significant and we're stressing that, and you might be thinking we're being a little over dramatic and maybe we're kind of blowing this out of proportion, but I will say that uh, the conditions are coming together for a tornado outbreak. It just depends on the fine scale details, exactly how those evolve, and I'll get to those. So why is all this going to occur? Well, we have a ski jump negatively tilted jet stream uh, that we also have a lot of instability in fact dew points are going to be in the upper 60s the question is and this will really determine the severity of our severe weather event will storms provide cooling weather in the morning so will storms cool the temperatures Sunday morning and if that happens our severe weather threat will be a little less but nevertheless we still have that potential for storms. Notice uh, non-severe storms later on tonight. You can see that area focused in southwest Missouri. That could be a small little cluster of storms that develops. Tomorrow the risk shifts off to the west as a dry line and cold front organizes. You can see that highlighted orange area. Notice that we're still under a thunderstorm risk but uh, the conditions won't be right for severe weather in northwest Arkansas. Now on Sunday this is a day three convective outlook from the Storm Prediction Center and it is extremely rare for them to go moderate risk three days out. They usually reserve that uh, for essentially the day of the severe weather event. And every time that they have gone a moderate risk for severe weather three days out, that leads to a high risk. And to put it into perspective, high risks are issued, I would say, maybe once or twice a year out of all the thunderstorm risks. And notice that moderate risk is very, very close to northwest Arkansas. It does include portions of the River Valley and the Washita's. We have the risk of tornadoes, very large hail, as well as damaging winds. So what's our moisture right now? Well, it's non-existent. We have the cold front come through. Remember the storms on our Thursday. In fact, there's a, a possible tornado that touched down in Gravit, wind damage in the River Valley. Um, I'll have more on that on the newscast tonight, so make sure you watch that on KWA and Fox 24. But the moisture is down to the south, but I want to show you this surging northward. Watch the future track as we put this into motion, and by tomorrow morning, that moisture surges into the areas of Oklahoma. Now, there's also going to be a dry line that develops. It's going to be very pronounced, and the thunderstorms will develop east of the dry line on Saturday. On Sunday, the dry line starts to shift off to the east, and as that dry line progresses eastward, thunderstorms will develop rapidly ahead of that dry line. Now, here's what concerns me. The dry line starts marching east on Sunday afternoon, and you will notice that it slams on the brakes and remains off to the west of us. Now, this is a similar setup to uh, March 12, 2006, where the dry line moved into eastern Oklahoma and kind of stalled out. Also, look at the dew points. I mean, we're talking mid to upper 60s. In fact, the dew point at one time hit 68 in Fayetteville. And then thankfully on Monday, the cold front and the dry line starts to move eastward. 
but an upper 60 dew point is pretty significant to say the least especially when you have a very strong jet stream moving in right now we're seeing high clouds in fact you're seeing in response to the system that's making its way on the west coast you can already see those cirrus clouds beginning to develop as the lift increases now we're zooming out a little more and the storm system that we're watching uh, is just now starting to move onto the west coast. It's still off the coast, but you can definitely see that low circulating and spinning just to the west of San Francisco. That low is diving to the southeast. The nose of the jet stream now just making it onto the coast of the United States. There is a lot of jet stream energy. Gina's over here shaking her head going, this looks like a pretty potent system, and it definitely has the potential to be that. The question is, is Will we see those thunderstorms in the morning? Will they be isolated? Exactly where will the nose of the jet develop? All these things can't be determined three days out, so that's why you just have to stay tuned and, and uh, you keep a close watch on the weather on Sunday. Saturday, here's in the morning, there's that little complex of storms in southwest Missouri. Look at the cold air that this system has to work with, too. Snow developing in New Mexico and Colorado. Then notice on Saturday night into Sunday morning, here's the thunderstorms that are erupting in central Oklahoma. Those are going to make their way eastward. And then watch as the jet stream and the, um, the dry line starts to mix eastward. You can see those thunderstorms rapidly developing. Our timing is going to be mainly from about 2 o'clock in the afternoon until about 7, 8 o'clock in the evening, possibly even later. So it's something to watch. And then you can see those thunderstorms just continue over northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. So the entire area is going to be under the risk. Tornadic conditions at this point with the nose of the jet does appear a little favorable the farther south you go into the southwest Arkansas, southeast Oklahoma area. So that's the latest on this risk. Now we want to tell you about the ways to keep up with all this severe weather information because this is going to be vital to do on Sunday. Some of you might be away from your TV. These storms are going to move in. They're going to be strong. They'll have the potential to produce strong long track tornadoes as well if the shear in the environment looks as favorable as it does on Sunday. Uh, so you can keep up with our weather information, of course, on air. We're going to have a fully staffed weather department. Our storm spotters will be out in the field. We've got all our weather bug cameras uh, ready to track and monitor and watch these storms. We'll also have the crawl on the screen. But uh, from any mobile device, so if you're away from your TV, we offer live streaming, and we will be live streaming on Sunday. We're going to launch that stream early. We're going to keep it running throughout our coverage. Uh, you can also catch that live stream on NWA Weather. It's our new weather app. Just search NWA Weather, all one word. Also, KNWA uh, and IMAP Weather Radio if you're partners with that. Live chat stream during severe storms. We'll also have that running, and we can have your questions answered as we are covering severe weather, and I know you'll have plenty of them. Let's say you're away from your radio, uh, away from your TV, away from your phone, and you just want to listen to the radio. You can do that on 90.9 KLRC. Uh, they also have alternate frequencies for the Bentonville area and Springdale. Also, weather call. Sign up now. That's the thing to do. AlertWorks Weather Radios. We have those available at Marvin's Food Stores and CVs. Now is the time to get those programmed, get those uh, worked out, and, and make sure that they are ready for the alerts that will come about on Sunday. Uh, again, you can pick those up at Marvin's CV Family Foods, and there is uh, nwahomepage.com, a tutorial with all this information. Last Last thing I'm going to tell you about, Weather Call. It's a great service. It offers site-specific warnings. Weather Call is offering a free trial, so all you have to do is click that free trial button. You'll be geared up and ready for uh, severe weather alerts. Just enter your name and your email, and it takes about five minutes to set up. So, Job Shadow still in the background, and uh, we are watching this storm system closely. We're going to be fully staffed. We're going to have more information during the newscast tonight. So keep it here with your Northwest Arkansas Weather Authority, and we will keep you safe.